I feel like this shirt is very fitting for this video. Hey guys, my name is Casey Michelle, your favorite breathwork coach. I'm saying it, I'm claiming it, I am. And today we're talking about how I mastered my anxiety. Now that's like kind of a stretch. Mastered is like, mastered. But I significantly changed my levels of anxiety. And I wanna share how and some techniques that really, really helped me. Before I do, I need a thumbs up. I need to comment down below with your favorite emoji and I need you to be subscribed. So anxiety in itself, right, is typically more of a future-based fear. We are like in our what-if scenarios, things that are literally not happening in reality, we are stressed about. It is totally our minds making up scenarios or, you know, just futuristic what-ifs. In general, my relationship with anxiety, I don't think that I realized how anxious I was. Uh, some people totally know that they are an anxious person. I didn't realize that I am capable of that. You know, you hear anxiety and you're like, well, I don't have like that problem. Like I'm not, I'm not that anxious. But until doing conscious breathing activities, I was like, oh, this is what it feels like to be calm? Oh, well, I haven't felt like that in a long time. <laughs> you know, it was like a really big realization of like, oh yeah, I'm a lot more anxious than I realized. And that was the most mind blowing part of breath work for me and like teaching it. Uh, most of us are over breathing actually, or we're in a fight or flight space and we don't even realize it. Places that make me anxious or have made me anxious maybe are public speaking. I know this is like, but you're a YouTuber. This is way different, sis. <laughs> this is way different than talking to a crowd of people. Confrontation, not my thing, don't really like it. Driving, and we're gonna name those three to start because there's probably more. But driving, I have definitely been in some very scary car situations and or driving situations, accidents and stuff. And I still to this day have like trigger moments or just like really feel my body get anxious. That might actually be number one where I find myself the most anxious. And so to combat that and to kind of decrease these anxiety levels, one, like I said, conscious breathing, I think for everyone will make you realize that you're a lot more anxious than calm. Grocery shopping, kids, partners, friends, internet, stimulation, sedation. There's like so many things going on. Your nervous system all day long, your senses all day long, right now, are hearing things, are feeling things, are seeing things. You're just intaking a lot. And then there's like invisible stress, like Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and radiation and like all this stuff going on in the air, right? So. To combat all of that, <laughs> prioritizing, consistently prioritizing my nervous system really rewired the way that I handle anxiety. I think that's the difference. I think not like you're never gonna get anxious. You're never gonna have those daunting thoughts. You know, I think we, we want that and I want that. And I will say, I think they've decreased a lot. They've definitely changed. But what's the bigger like, ha ah, moment is, my reaction to those triggers or those thoughts, like how I handle those things, like how I kind of zoom out and observe them rather than like attach to them and absolute with them. I think that is the practice that breathwork teaches that no one talks about <laughs> because it's like, yeah, breathwork helps anxiety, but it really helps the way you deal with it. It's not like it just gets rid of anxiety. Like it definitely for me personally, I think decreased it because again, I wasn't even aware that I was it. So it's kind of like you don't know what you don't know, but then when you know, you can't unknow. Anyway, and so realizing, you know, how many spaces do bring that up for me. Driving on the highway is a place that I am probably more anxious than not most of the time, especially here in Atlanta. Sometimes guys, hear me out, I am music head queen. Sometimes I need to turn the music off. I need silence in the car. I need to just act like there's a feather underneath my nose and I barely want to move it, so I'm going to slow my breath down. Like that is just one very simple technique, but I carry it with me all the time. I'm like, feather under my nose. Okay. We're okay. Silence. It was a really, really big one for me. I know it's not always the easiest thing to find this day and age. There's so many things pulling at you from people to information to phones. That was a big one that I realized really my nervous system needed. And of course, in that silence, having a moment to breathe. But in that, I will say, yes, there's a technique like the feather under the nose, but also not trying to control my breath, letting myself just like breathe but just bringing awareness to your breath actually slows it down automatically so sometimes you don't need some fancy technique 
It's just a matter of like, let me close my eyes, sit in silence, and that's it. Not stimulating, we're not sedating, we're just kind of being for a moment. Um, and you know, when it comes to like talking to group um, and confrontation, those things that are more like human to human interactions that definitely cause some anxiousness in my body. I think preparing for them is huge. Sometimes you can't always prepare for them, but I definitely implement breath work before those kind of things and during. <laughs> There's a lot of moments I can remember specifically like getting into a maybe heavier or like heated conversation with someone. And you know, you might lose it for a second, but then realizing like, whoa, 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 calm down my breath. Because your mind and your breath are together. They're like dating, they're going real steady. They love each other. So when you're in those like spaces and you're really reactive rather than active, it creates a very different thought pattern and word pattern and action pattern. So having a more like active awareness with your breath has an active awareness with your mind. And then, it, like I said, it ripples into the words you speak, the actions you take, and ultimately the reality you create. Just kind of zooming out and remembering how little this little moment is. And obviously that depends on what that moment is, but most of the time, it's like this little drop in this whole ocean. So if you're an anxious person or you feel like your anxiety literally rules your decision making, your relationships, and like it's really impacting and affecting very valuable parts of your life, then I highly recommend seeking conscious breathing practices. And if you're like, well, which one, which one? Bruh, any of them. <laughs> like, I think that is always the thing people ask me, like what technique is good for anxiety? I'm like, yo, Literally close your eyes and breathe and it'll be good. That's my general answer. But if you want a specific one, uh, I think extending your exhale is always what I will answer this question with. Extend your exhale, nose or mouth, whatever you choose, but let go so you can make space to receive. That is the kind of metaphor of inhale, exhale, let go, receive, give, take. Yeah, a lot of us do not really stretch out our exhale. We always think big breath in, so big inhale but big exhale. Hence why I've created the Exhale, a membership program where you can enjoy all the breath work you want in a community of people that also are prioritizing their nervous system. Hopefully this video helped you. Hopefully it shared some insight or maybe anything you've been dealing with as far as anxiety, stress levels or anything like that. Again, most of us don't know that we are that stressed. So until you dive into breath work, you might be like, ah, I don't need it. Whenever you feel called, I go, go into that calling because you will realize how vital it is. That's it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Peace.